CBFU from the shop is back at a brand new shop in lovely Bayonne, New Jersey. Well, it's the same shop. It's, it's well, it's Manifest Comics, but Manifest moved to a first floor location uh, just across the street, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Not across the street, like across Broadway, but across the street, um, whatever block this is. What is this? 34th. 34th Street. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shop. I took some shots of it, so you'll get to see a little bit of it. Stop by, check it out. You don't have to walk upstairs anymore, so you have no excuse. How happy, right how happy is the UPS guy? The UPS guy must be like... Super happy. Yeah, he's like, he he came, a smile first time I've ever. never seen that guy smile. <laughs> he's, he's two for two on being early. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. It was just the, it was the stairs. It was the stairs. The UPS guy had to climb upstairs he's every time in nature books. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, that's what it was. I would be too. I'd be the yeah, same way. Like, I'm going to stay out to the end of my room. <laughs> I'd do that too. Frey's not with us this week. Frey is, he's, he's either sick. Jerk. He's sick or President Trump might have deported him already. I don't know. I don't know. That's sad. We'll miss it you, is. Frey. It we'll is. miss you, Alfredo. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we got comics. Yes. Um, we have, it's a little bit different this week because this book, uh, After Death by Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire, is a very... A hefty book, half of its prose, so it uh, takes a little bit longer to read. So I read this, and Isaac read three comics, and that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So Isaac, you start it off. Should okay. I? I'm okay. just gonna make sure we're still rolling. That's a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, this is Ultimate Squared number one. This is the new volume of Ultimates from Marvel Comics by uh, Al Ewing, and art is now by uh, Travel. Is it Travel Foreman? I think is his name. One moment. Yeah, Travel Foreman. Um, and if you like the first volume of Ultimates by Al Ewing, you're probably going to like this. Um, this is a good, strong start, I think. Um, I'm not sure how much you needed to read the first volume. There are things that are here that are definitely um, carried over from the first volume. So having a general knowledge of the first volume of the, his Ultimates run will probably be helpful going forward. Uh, but it's good. It's good. It continues the adventures of the Ultimates who broke up due to Civil War. Now they're getting back together because something Galactus tells them, which is who's now the life bringer. Uh, the one thing I'll say about this book, I didn't really care for the art, the travel form and art. I wish there was a better artist. It's mm. okay, yeah. but it's not not the greatest art. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but Al Ewing's writing is really still top notch. He's um, I, I thought of him before as like a Jonathan Hickman, but not as uh, complicated yeah. complicated as Jonathan Hickman. So not a, not a John he still uses big ideas, yeah. but not as quite yeah. as complicated. And right? not as like dense stuff. Yeah. Um, so this is a fun number one issue. Uh, Black Panther has some great moments <coughs> in this because he comes to meet Captain Marvel at a diner in like a sort of a Clark Kent like disguise, yeah. and it's really it's fun. Cool. So I really enjoyed this. I would give it a I seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. And I definitely would suggest you read it. Suggest I read it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I like the first series so. Hopefully this is good. I know some people don't like Al Ewing, actually, but... Uh, I like him. I think, I, he's I think he's a good, good stuff. writer, and I think it's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. What do you got He's next? got an Inhumans book coming out, too. Yes, he does. Friend. Inhumans. Uh, uh, Royals. The Royals. Mm -hmm. They're going back to space. Yep. Okay, next, I read uh, Superpowers, number one, by... You child. Hmm? You child. I'm not a child. I just like... It's oh, by it? Art Baltazar and Franco, were the writer-artist and co-writing. Um, it's a weird, weird book. If you're a kid, I think you might really, really like it. But if you're a kid and you go into like uh, to read other DC comics, you might be very, very confused because this has some weird stuff in it. Um, yeah, uh, Superman's parents are still alive on Candor, and she's pregnant with another baby. There's Brainiac with who's now Superman's half brother in this, uh, and it's really weird. But um, it's fun too. It's like a quirky kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's just really weird. I, I feel like it's like one of those Cartoon Network shorts. Yeah. You know, like they would do those five minute shorts. And so if you enjoy that kind of thing, I think you'll really like this. And kids might really like it. I was just very confused by why they were doing some of the things they did. Yeah. I mean, the art looks fun. It looks silly. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just so weird. And Lex yeah. Luthor, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what was going on most of the time. It's I'm not like sure what age the characters were. Sometimes they seem like they, they were younger like characters. Adults. They look like they're adults. Yeah. But they also have their, you know, the parents. I mean, the first thing Batman says, um, Brainiac kidnaps Batman. That's how the book is set up. And the first thing he says, uh, my half-brother will come for you. And I was like, who the hell is his half-brother? Yeah. And then as it goes in, it's Superman is his half-brother. Yeah. But I think the only reason that's Superman's weird. his half-brother is because Jor-El created him. Okay. So that I think that's sense. why that's he pretty... continues his... Yeah. Half brother, so nice. I don't know. It's called Superpowers. Got the old yeah. 
That's fun. Which is cool. And I think I think Superpowers is coming back to Cartoon Network. Well, it's going to be some kind of cartoon. Yeah. It's not going to be this uh, yeah, no. silly. I don't think it's going to be a little so bit silly. So, it was okay. It's a good book for, um, like, young young ones, I would say. Um, not so much for adults reading. Uh, unless you're into that. I don't know. Some people read it with your that. kid. Yeah. Read it with your kid. Re- teach your kids to read yeah. with Superpowers. They have a new, uh, it's a pretty, looks like a bulked up section for kids. It's more than it was before, right, Mike? Yeah, no, it's more than it was before. They got a bulked up section for kids. So come mm-hmm. get your own comics and then get some for the little one, too. Yeah. Get them, get them hooked early. Get them to be nerdy early. That's right. That's what you got to do. Um, but I would give this uh, <clears throat> five Lugos for me. Mm-hmm. For kids, probably higher. I'd give it like seven Lugos for kids. Cool. Five Lugos for me. Cool. Okay, I'll go, I'll go next. I'll say okay. AD After Death. You can check on that in a, in a yeah. second. Uh, this is by Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire. They've been like talking about this for a while now. Um, they're both great writers in their own right. Jeff Lemire, Jeff Lemire, don't know how to pronounce his name. He, uh, I would say Lemire. Yeah, I know. But uh, he has a style of art that is not typical, but it's good. He has his, um, I forget the names of his other books that he's written, has drawn and written. Uh, uh, Sweet Tooth was one of them. Yeah. And it's nice. It's it's a, uh, it's not like a superpower like comic watercolor. art. Yeah, like watercolor. It's, it's like a little painted. Some watercolors. But it's, it's nice. It fits the book very well. Uh, what makes this book so... Uh, dense is the prose. There's uh, half the book, I would say, is like a novel with some pictures on the sides, and half of it is a comic book. And it's about a world without death, um, but it's a little more complicated than that. Um, it's, it's, it's very like philosophical, I found, which also makes it a little bit longer to read. It just like it looks at the idea of death mm-hmm. from the point of view of a child, the point of view of an adult looking back on his childhood and how he thought about death and it's it's sad it's it's it's, it's about death mm-hmm. so it is um but it's an interesting read the the book actually is it's 5.99 which isn't that bad considering that how big it is and it's very nice it's like a canvas type prestige and it's oversized and uh it's just they're not they don't make books like this so it's nice to see something so different mm-hmm. you know i know and, you read the the preview pages you know i've read the preview pages and i'll, I'll read it tomorrow yeah. But um, it, it, first of all, uh, what you said before about just the um, the format of the book and yeah. stuff is just really, really nice. Yeah, they yeah. did not skimp There's on the quality like of this book. Yeah. They were originally going to release this as a graphic novel, but then they decided to do it in three parts. Yeah. And I didn't know what to expect. I, I figured it was just going to be like a regular size comic, prestige format, yeah. just regular size comic. No, I didn't expect to see it to hefty, be hefty, this hefty. size and just beautiful. And yeah. some of the, the pages, it's a double page spread. It is really, really beautiful. Yeah. I like it. I look forward to reading it. You know, it's very good. I, I, you'll like it. It's, uh, it is definitely like, it, it makes you think about yeah. stuff, and which is, you know, good, good or bad, but, uh, it makes you feel feelings. It makes you, yeah. It makes, uh, you think about loss and death. And that's what they're going for. It's, it's real, because I feel like Scott Snyder lately has had, like, that thing where he's, like, he's, like, plumbing the depths of reality, like, mm-hmm. which is, he's, like, talks about how he's worried about his children. Depression, anxiety. Depression, and anxiety, anxiety. And it's, like, it really hits that. So mm-hmm. it's, it feels it's a real book, but mm-hmm. it's also sci-fi, which is cool. And it's I cool. I mean, it's yeah. Scott Snyder and Jeff Lemire, so you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. With those two. I would, I would give it an 8 out of 10 logos. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Our last book of the week this week is an all-new Venom number one from Marvel. This is Marvel New Now Now. And, uh, new Now Now. Now Now Now. New Now Now Now. Uh, it's written by Mike Costa, who's done some like Spider-Man like tie-ins, I think. And the artist is Gerardo Sandoval, who's done, like, he started New Avengers, and he's got, like, a... He ended the last Venom story. Yeah, he's got, like, a Joe Maduria, like, Rush Joe Maduria. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's yeah, I would call right. him Jeff, Rush Jeff Mo, uh, Jeff, Joe Maduria. Joe Maduria yeah, style. Maduria. And um, Flash Thompson is the no longer Venom. Names. I don't no, think that's a spoiler. Weird. That's yeah. just the way it is. Well, they've been saying, it's like, this is, like... A new Venom, yeah. and it's also like more of the. Uh, they do mention in the letter pages that they're not done with Flash Thompson. Now. Um, we don't mm-hmm. find out what happens to Flash Thompson in this issue. We don't find out why he's separated from Venom. Venom just starts the book completely alone. Um, this isn't a bad book, and it's, it's pretty good. I don't particularly like what they did with Venom. Mm-hmm. I don't like the guy, the new guy who's the host for Venom. Yeah. I mean, he's still, just like Flash Thompson. He's also he was in the army. He's an army ranger and everything. But, but he's a totally he's, new character. Yeah, he's a completely new character. He's not hasn't been in any of the comics yeah. before, and he's just not a good guy. Oh, I don't know if he wasn't a good guy before or yeah. the, what um, they're doing, but he's not a good guy, and the way he treats the Venom symbiont, symbiont. is not nice. No, and I don't like really? that. Yeah, he treats the like the murdering. Yeah, he's he. 
If um, Eddie Brock was yeah. the bad part, I mean the good part of Venom, and Venom yeah. was the bad in that relationship. You think it's like reverse. And this is reverse. So like because the symbiote is still a hero. Yeah. Remembering what Flash Thompson oh, okay. taught him, and this guy is not. So a good now he's guy. like reversing the trend. Yeah. Because like okay, Flash Thompson made Venom good. Now this guy's making him bad again. I mean, you can see at the end he's on the. Aww. Yeah. That's sad. And I, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like. I, I really enjoyed. How the dare list. you, new guy? I, yeah, I really enjoyed um, what, what uh, they were doing with Flash Thompson and Venom. Yeah. So this wasn't great for me yeah but um I'm, I'm willing to see where they go with it but yeah. uh right now i would give this a six out of ten logos six, that's fair. it wasn't a bad start it wasn't a bad book necessarily yeah. the art didn't look as bad as i thought it no was. i used to not like this guy's art at all no it's it's, it's, it's stronger kinda... than um his some of his yeah. past stuff yeah um I'm, i look forward to see where it goes i look to see what would happen to flash thompson and everything yeah. but right I now was talking, i was talking to jared the other day our fallen friend jared who's fallen to Walmart, yeah. but uh, we were talking about who's your favorite Venom, mm -hmm. and mine was always Eddie Brock, because that's what I grew up with, yeah. and he did not, that. his was always Flash Thompson, mm -hmm. since Flash Thompson's yeah. been it. He's like, Flash Thompson, Matt Gargan, and then Eddie Brock, jeez. And I would have like, Eddie Brock, uh, Flash Thompson, then Well, Matt, Matt Gargan is also in this Is he really? Yes, he okay. Is. Well, I mean, I don't know, I, I always liked Venom, because I was a kid, and it was cool, yeah. it was like, he was a bad yeah. guy, he was like, bad Spider-Man, but it was like, it was extreme, it was like, yeah. and I liked Venom and Wolverine and Gambit at the same time, yeah. so I was... I was a '90s comic book kid. This is, so. I don't know, it's a different Venom. It's a very, to, it's a uh, very different Venom. I was hoping they went back to Eddie Brock, and they just like went back to that. No, whole thing this is a completely, completely different character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, give it a shot. Yeah. See what you think. But for me, uh, who's your favorite Venom? Comment yeah. below. Hashtag this is not my Venom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Hashtag not my Venom. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for yes. watching. If you watched, yeah. And um, if you didn't, you know, yeah, why not? But how do you even see the ending of this video if yeah. you didn't watch it? There's plenty more so books to, to buy. It. Go to Manifest Comics, check out the new place, buy comics, because Thursday's Thanksgiving, and you might want to just avoid people um, yeah. and just go into your room, just find a corner and just read comics. It's better than talking politics. Yes. It's way better. <laughs> Trust me. We'll see you. See you. Why are you guys in the corner? Oh, Bob, no. <laughs> <laughs>